necessary but not sufficient to produce consciousness. Median vision theory can be summarised by two fairly straightforward claims. One, that the modern brain that has uh, lost its pineal eye but retained its pineal gland instantiates a virtual generic sense organ. A virtual or phantom if you like in the sense that it isn't a physical organ of the body. It will become more clear what is meant by generic sense as opposed to special particular senses such as sight, smell or hearing. The second claim is that the template for this virtual, what I call generic sensor, is the old primal parietal pineal or median eye, the same thing. Although the old physical median eye forms a basis or prototype for modern consciousness, it might be true that evolution has expanded upon this template or blueprint over the ages. The comparison between median vision and modern consciousness seems to be valid on the most basic levels. The gap left by the median eye provides grounds for sentience and abstract mental representations. Steve Nichols compares six basic properties of awareness with some known properties of median vision based on experiments on animals with a functioning pineal eye. The first is wholeness of field. Now we do not experience several points of views concurrently, but experience the world from a single vantage point. The ancient reptile only has one median eye. Multimodality in the sense that we can both hear, smell, see and feel simultaneously. Non-transferability in that we don't experience mental representations from anybody else, only from ourselves. Yeah. Similarly, an ancient animal with direct median vision, a pineal eye, would not have been able to exchange its pineal eye physically with one belonging to another animal. Another shared property is having no on-off control. Even when asleep, we cannot purely decide to dream by choice, and this seems to be an inheritance from the median eye which cannot be shut off by either muscular impulses or covered with an eyelid because it has no eyelid. A fifth point is that there is no identifiable place in the brain where consciousness is uniquely situated. The sixth point is that we have awareness both internal and external of our bodies. The median eye mediates between the two and this process isn't just a one-way process, not just a, a looking out or a looking in, it's both. Do you think that it's fair to consider that consciousness is um, median vision shaped? Uh, gosh, well I never thought of that before. I'm not quite sure what it means to say that consciousness can have a shape. What's that mean? Well, the pineal eye was a template in evolution for modern consciousness. Mm. And that it's only by its removal is, is that the, the brain is, expect, is organized, because it developed over such a long time with the pineal eye as its as a main sensory input, it's actually expecting input from an organ that's no longer there, mm. and so generates it from certain deep structures. Yeah, I see. Well, it's a nice idea. Uh, I think one of the problems of testing it is that we don't know which relatively primitive organisms have consciousness and don't have consciousness. We don't really know when consciousness started. I think that's going to be one of the problems testing it. Mm. Is there any experiments that conclusively prove evolution? You can't rerun history. Right. So evolution will always remain mm. a theory. Yes. That, that's a diff part of the difficulty of the, of the brain. Yes, it ultimately depends what you mean by proof. In, in a way, there's no such thing as empirical proof, of course, actually. Would um, my claim that perhaps if you can develop applications from it, Mm. If the theory can generate useful sure. things, that would, sure. that would go some way. To oh, work. absolutely. And that's one of the things about evolution. It's got so many implications which are incredibly important. For example, the fact that you can use drugs on one animal and then, or to say, uh, and then use them to predict what will happen with us. I mean, that sort of cross-species similarity, it, it really comes from evolutionary theory and all that has immense practical importance. Now, you, I think, would want to look for something of practical significance, some prediction that you could make from it, and then although you might not be able to test each step, if you have a model, a conceptual model, which leads to interesting, useful results, bingo! The self is just the perception. Again, it's all this pointing towards the seat of consciousness. What MVT 
uh, could be the, the pineal eye, the, the atrophied pineal eye could be said to be um, almost like a, a, a focal point for all of these interacting elements to come together and form the gestalt of a being. The median eye true feeling disappeared so long ago in evolutionary history. It would be surprising if the modern brain and the modern form of E1 consciousness had remained unchanged since these times. And I quite willingly accept that human culture and language and other factors have shaped part of our common mental experience. But what I'm saying is that these are changes in degree, but not changes in, in the basic processes of, of cognition. Sensory processing in the, in the brain is what's called generic. So rather than streams of separate special sense data for each sense, sight, hearing and so on, the primary sensory signals, light radiation, sound waves, etc., are translated into forms of signal that the brain can process neuronally. Well, I think it depends where it is in the brain. The actual activity, as you record it electrically, is exactly the same, whether it's smell, whether it's sight, whether it's touch, or indeed whether it's making your arm move. And you've got things called action potentials, which are little tiny pulses of electricity, and they're exactly the same all the way through. It simply depends, really, which bit of the brain is active, rather than what that activity, so to speak, looks like. But you're absolutely right, of course, that there is no sound in the head, there's no light that enters the brain. It's all coded by these action potential signals, and then the brain has to decode these messages to make sense of the world. The interactions from ideation, the interactions from sensation and perception all come together and form, if you like, the actual being. It's a virtual being. It, we, we live in virtual reality. In the primitive Sphenodon E2 animals, the median eye exists as physical substance and is directly in contact with light and the external world. In E1 animals, the median eye effect is achieved indirectly by this simulation or generation of a, a phantom or virtual pineal eye rather than by having a physical, what I call a physical mind. There are evolutionary advantages to this. The key difference between the animal with the physical median eye and one that has lost median eye is that internally originating sense data can be experienced in the, the latter case the E1 neural system, in addition to externally originating sensory information, which is accessible to both types of animals. An intelligent robot, insect or primitive reptile, might survive perfectly well and behave in much the same way as a more modern E1 type animal, which is self-conscious, but without any conscious experience of this behaviour. Perhaps the strongest evidence for the generic nature of sensory processing comes from work on synesthesia. Synesthesia is the involuntary experience of cross-modal associations. It's, in other words, uh, a sensation which is not the normal one for that stimulus. And this actually goes against a basic neurological principle, which is called the law of specific energies. That was actually formulated by a German physiologist in the 19th century, called Muller. Um, and the idea is that any given nerve can only signal a particular sensation. So that, for example, the eye can only signal light, the ear only sound, the skin only touch, and then you've got other receptors like pressure, heat, and so on. But any given nerve can only signal one thing. Very important point. It depends where in the brain the nerve enters in order for that sensation. But synesthesia goes against that because if you touch, say, your skin and you experience a, a purple patch, that is some leakage in the brain crossing over and violating um, Muller's principle. It is abnormal only in the sense that it is statistically rare. In fact, it is a normal brain process that is prematurely displayed to consciousness in a minority of individuals.